I think naturally, of course. I mean, um, but that's been since I came back. Um, you know, it would be great to play against those guys in the, in the postseason. But I've always, throughout my whole career, I was, I've always wanted to go against Wade in a playoff series. I mean, that's just, we've always talked about it even before we became teammates in, in 10. So, um, you know, I don't think it's been, it's not been heavy on my mind, but it's crossed my mind throughout my whole career. So that was King James today saying it would be great to face the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Skip, your reaction? My reaction is, Stephen A., I believe LeBron would prefer, much prefer, to play Toronto in the next playoff round. Obviously, much shorter flight. I think a slightly easier opponent on the court and a much less emotionally, psychologically stressful series off the court, so to speak, in that LeBron would have to go back to Miami and face that crowd, and he's been through it before, but this would be ratcheted up on the emotional scale. I, I was also curious, Stephen A., curious what you also would react to this, but LeBron said, and I've al always wanted to play against Wade. He, he didn't call him D. Wade. He didn't call him Dwayne. He said Wade. just seemed odd to me that he would call arguably his best friend in the world, Wade, because I don't think Dwayne would say, I've always wanted to play against James in a playoff series. I don't know, just, I, I was just <laughs> curious about that. I mean, it just hit me as it's odd. It's odd to me. I'm, I'm not reading anything into it, it's just odd. I would never say, I've always wanted to go against Smith. You know, like, I, I just wouldn't call you Smith. Yeah. I don't know, I, you know, you're my that's brother fair. from another mother, right? Okay, that's just me, but in the end, uh, I, I'm sure they have kicked it around. I'm sure LeBron would, would in some ways enjoy going against Dwayne. But in the big picture, I think he would much prefer to go against Toronto. I don't think you know LeBron James because LeBron James would definitely look forward to going up against the Miami Heat. From a fun perspective, his boy, he doesn't mind going up against them because they're basketball players, they're both champions, and as a result, you want, uh, you know, the best going up against the best to some degree. You certainly invite that level of, of, of epic competition. But where this takes on uh, another plot, where the stakes are exponentially higher, is Pat Riley. Because Pat Riley ain't joking. And Pat Riley ain't trying to be friends with competition. And Pat Riley is trying to annihilate you now. He's going to be classy in defeat, et cetera, et cetera. But from the moment LeBron James left, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Pat Riley was contemplating retirement at the time that LeBron James, right before LeBron James decided to take his talents back to Cleveland, Ohio. Pat Riley hasn't thought about retirement since the moment that LeBron James decided to leave. Because Pat Riley believed and took that very, very personal. You know, his, old, his, his stewardship of the Miami Heat franchise, the winner within, the champion that he is, et cetera, et cetera. And the players that he has stockpiled and the brand of basketball that he has insisted upon, uh, upon being implemented, it's primarily to ultimately have this encounter. His team against LeBron James and his team. And Pat Riley has the mindset, don't judge him by one year. Judge him over the course of however many years LeBron's going to be in, 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 in Cleveland, who's going to be the one that's more successful. And even though D. Wade is his own man and D. Wade is not going to stop befriending LeBron James, in a perfect world, Pat Riley would have preferred that from the moment that Dwayne Wade left, which I explained to you. That was something that he and D. Wade had an encounter about. And, and D. Wade let Pat Riley know, look, that's, that's, I'm not that kind of brother. This is my brother. I love him. And I'm going to go at him on a basketball court. But off the court, we boys just deal with it. But to have to have that conversation, to have to make sure that point was made so emphatically, that means somebody was implying that you didn't need to be that way. And that person was Pat Riley. Pat Riley is about winning. Pat Riley is trying to win. Pat Riley is about not jumping ship, et cetera, et cetera. And I, even though I'm sure he'll open the doors to LeBron if LeBron indeed wanted to return, as long as LeBron is wearing another uniform, having departed from Miami to do it is something that Pat Riley is going to embrace very personally. And those players on Miami is going to know that. 
if it comes down to Miami versus Cleveland in the conference finals. I can promise you that. And the level of intrigue and, 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 and tenacity and suspense and everything that comes with it, I mean, you live for this as a player. LeBron ain't running from that. LeBron is going to embrace that challenge. I promise you that. Okay, he ain't going to run from that but, at but all. But you're mostly looking at it from the Miami perspective. You just brought up LeBron. So you tell me, heart of hearts, would LeBron prefer, if he had his choice, Toronto or Miami? Miami. I, I completely disagree. He, he'd be foolish to think that. You know that. why? You, you why, know, why would you, you know, take you the harder series, the harder route, and have to go back to Miami? Because everybody's not Skip Bayless, the San Antonio Spur fan wishing for people to get hurt or kidnapped no. or something so his team no. can win. Some That's guys not, want I that level you, of competition. He, they, he would they, rather play No, you can't Toronto. promise me that. You can't, I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you what I know. I'll Don't worry about I how see. I know, but I know. All right. And I'm telling you, I, you can tell me what you see. I'm telling you what I know. And I'm telling you, when you talk about Toronto, Toronto, think about the lack and the absence of suspense that that would have. Think about how much you would care about Toronto. You see, don't get me wrong, we respect them, love Dwayne Casey, but you ain't think, I mean, when you talk uh, about, tell me right now as you sit in that chair, you're not thinking about, wow, Miami, oh, me. Cleveland. You didn't ask but, me what I want. No, no, no. I but, want but, Miami. But that's what a player want wants. Year. No, but uh, hold on, I'm telling you, that's what a player cares about, too. They want to be where the action is. Bayless so the Smith, at? we got to go to break, guys. Okay. Sorry, more first take when we come back. That was fun, though. Stephen A's face was priceless earlier. First Take is presented by Jet.com. Visit Jet.com and see how much you can save today. And in part by Ace, the helpful place. And Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Quality Guaranteed. Gentlemen, I don't know if you heard this, but the playmaker, Michael Irvin, said in the second round the Cowboys have drafted the black Luke Keekley in Jalen Smith. Mm. Irv, how we doing? Skip, mm. how do you feel about this? Uh, Stephen A. Smith, I love it. Go I ahead. think Michael Irvin knows exactly what he's talking about here. If Jalen Smith gets 100% healthy, I think he could be even better than Luke Keekley. If he stays 100% healthy through his career, I think you're looking at, you'll look back at this draft and say he was the best player in this crop. And if that's true, as Michael Irvin also intimated in the tweet, you might be looking at a Hall of Famer. So I say tweet Michael Tweet. Well, well I, listen, I like Jalen Smith. I'm rooting for him. Great story. I hope that he gets better. You know, after the devastating injury in the Fiesta Bowl. But what I would say is this. Be careful about whatever Michael Irvin has to say. Uh, about players drafted by the Cowboys. He has no objectivity whatsoever. Michael Irvin ain't watching college football unless, they, it's, unless it's the Miami Hurricanes. So the only reason he's bloviating about this kid is because the kid is in a Cowboy uniform. These are not the same Cowboys that Michael Irvin once donned and, and praised. But they will be. They're a different breed. Yeah. They're losers yeah, for now. They're losers, yeah. Wishful okay. thinking. Yeah. Whatever, they I will be. It. Hello, welcome back in the first take. Okay, Westgate Las Vegas Superbook has their post playoff odds here, post NFL draft, excuse me, to win the title. So let's look at the squads. We're starting with the NFC East. Skip Squad and Dallas are the favorites at three to two, followed by New York at eleven to five, then Washington and Philly at four to one. Did the odds makers get this right, Skip Bayless? No, they did not. I think they're underrating the Washington Redskins. They have my Cowboys rated correctly. I actually expected Washington and Dallas to be sort of co-favorites. In fact, to be totally objective at this moment, I would give the Redskins a slight edge over my Cowboys to win the East next year at this moment, depending on how everyone comes back to my Cowboys healthy. We have three off-season acquisitions, Tony Romo, Des Bryant, Orlando Scandrick. I consider them almost like free agent re-pickups to come back. Will they all come back healthy? I hope so. I think so. Need to see so. Right now, I look at what Washington did. Man, when you land Josh Norman, that's a pretty big deal to me. I give you that. I, I told you, Josh Doxton, he's the best wide receiver in the draft. I watched him a lot at TCU. Bully for the Redskins. They got him. We talked about Sua Cravens. He's just a baller, man. He will hit people, and I think he will fit right in quickly. 
I, I'm not even sure what position he plays. Will he end up at safety or some sort of outside linebacker? He was a good pick. Way to go, Redskins. So, you know, they, they retained Kirk Cousins, obviously. They won the division last year, 9-7. and seven. They won their last four to, to go from 5-7 and seven to 9-7. and seven. I don't know. They won at the Bears. They beat the Bills at home, which I was impressed with. And they won at Philly and at Dallas, not so much. But still, I, I think just on the quality of what they pulled off last year, then they lost, obviously, at home in the playoffs to Green Bay, 35-18. to 18. But I would make them a co-favorite with my Cowboys, who will be just about all offense and not much defense. This will be easily the most explosive offense in pro football, regardless of what she read as we went to break about expected it's not expected to be it will be the most explosive offense be careful don't thanks jinx to yourself zeke the freak i don't need to this is don't. jinx proof yeah. zeke the freak will, will control the football dallas will dominate time of possession the way they did with demarco murray two years ago when they led the league the nfl in time of possession with 33 minutes to 27 for the opposition they'll do that again this year keep the defense off the field. I'm not sure, I, I have no defense of my defense, but I think you have no defense of you and Molly's New York football giants. I have no idea how they're the second choice here to compete in the NFC East because I think they're being overrated with their offseason acquisitions. They spent whatever it is, $200 million mm -hmm. to keep JPP, of course. Then they add Olivier Vernon, Damon Harrison, Janoris Jenkins, Zero Pro Bowls among the three and zero playoff appearances among the three. And you paid $200 million. What? For, for that? They went on? That's upgraded? Really? Eli Apple is an upgrade? I don't think so. I, I give you Sterling Shepard. He's a stud. He will help Odell Beckham. He'll take a little pressure off. But isn't it about time for Eli to lead the league in interceptions for a fourth time? It just feels like it's right on schedule this year for a fourth time Eli well, starts throwing interceptions. You're unbelievable. I don't know how much work the Giants have done in their offensive line and clearly their running game because I think if you want to protect Eli Manning, you need to go the route of the Cowboys and doing what they did in terms of having a massive offensive line, having some semblance of a running game. We know he's got receivers. Unfortunately, we don't know how much you can rely on the other parts that he has around him. So I agree with you about the Giants, and I also agree with you about the Redskins. I think the Eagles uh, seem destined to come in the last place. This just feels like a rebuilding year for me when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. In the case of the Washington Redskins, I don't believe that Kirk Cousins was a fluke. I don't think that he is what he thought he was. I think he had a lot of nerves, you know, talking about, you like that? You like that? It really annoyed me because I don't think that he deserves. I don't think he's qualified to be being in anybody's face, uh, you know, like that. I don't think his skill sets require that. But I do love the fact that they got Josh Norman. I do love the fact that the Washington Redskins seem to be coming at you and they're trying to buffer that defense. And I think about that, uh, but, and I say second place all day long. In the case of the Dallas Cowboys, clearly they had the best offseason thus far of anybody um, within their division. The way I look at the Cow Dallas Cowboys, I think their offense is going to be so potent that it's not going to really matter until playoff time. Uh, what the defense is going to do because they'll be able to score enough points. It's just that come playoff time, because I do believe the Dallas Cowboys will make the playoffs. Come Thank playoff you. time, I don't think they're going to be able to do much because their defense is going to let them down. When you're going up against the better teams, they'll figure out over the course of an NFL season how to somewhat neutralize that offense. Offense still going to get theirs, no doubt but somewhat neutralize them to a point where the defense is going to have to come through. And I'm not sure that that's going to be able to happen with the Dallas Cowboys this season. Once Jalen Smith gets healthy and able to do some things, I definitely think they've got a promising future. But next year, this upcoming season, I don't believe that the Dallas Cowboys defense is going to be able to do much to save the day. I agree. So I, I must tell you, you can't see her right now, but Miss Molly's hot here sitting next to me because I have just ridiculed her Giants and, and she's overprotective of her Giants and that's okay. But we also it, added a well, great safety a and a great, and a great linebacker and a running back. Yeah, that a lot of people I, are high I, on. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, and also, uh, at the end of the day... I could be wrong. At the end of the day, Skip, if you have, if you have Tony Romo, please mm -hmm. answer this for me. You have Tony Romo, you have mm -hmm. Eli Manning, you have Kirk Cousins. Who do you want in clutch situations at the quarterback position? Oh, Romo, easily. Really? Yeah. Oh, because you had one year, that was okay? Yeah. All right. Remember what happened in the opener last year? Mm. Remember what Romo did to your Giants in the opener down the stretch? Yeah. Remember the last play 
to Witten to win the game <laughs> when he was healthy. And how'd that end for you? Well, okay. he was healthy. Case closed, friends. Time to move on mm -hmm. here. All right. No Curry, no problem. As the Warriors take the first two games against the Trailblazers, should Curry play in game three? The guys will tell you that after the break.